Welcome to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. Before we dive into this powerful episode, please remember to subscribe to our channels and give us a five-star rating on iTunes and to continue hustling. This episode is sponsored by Transact Card, Align Life, Neuro Infinity, Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Sherman College of Chiropractic, New Patients in a Box, Life Chiropractic College West, Pro Hockey Cairos, Pro Baseball Cairos, and the IFCO. Let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 510 of the Cairo Hustle podcast. I'm your producer, Luke Millette, and here's your host, James Chester. So today we have the opportunity of interviewing Dr. Melinda Hallam. And if you want to hear how a chiropractor passes on legacy, stay tuned. Welcome back. This is another episode of the Cairo Hustle podcast. This is kind of a special thing for me. It's a TLC edition because um, I was out at Dean and Jen DePice's event Um, out in Philadelphia and I had a chance to meet Dr. Melinda and uh, we just hit it off and we were talking about stuff and uh, I love that group so if you guys are looking for an awesome coaching group out there um, check out um, TLC and uh, yeah I think it's going to be a fun episode today but before we jump into episode 510 with uh, Dr. Melinda Hallam we're going to talk about why we do what we do here Um, First and foremost, I think that this is probably one of the most essential things that I'll ever mention besides chiropractic is freedom of speech. Um, Those things are really important. And that is also paired with um, medical freedom and family health freedom. Those things to me, um, the past couple of years, we've gotten a big uh, taste of what that feels like uh, when that doesn't stay um, free and when we don't feel that that, that's, uh, you know, our reality. So Cairo Hustle will always stand for those things. Um, we also protect BJ Pauper's sacred trust. Um, I always tell people, I urge you, if you don't know what that means, go to your favorite search engine and look for BJ Palmer's last words. You're going to learn so much more about why we do this show than and chiropractic than you ever could before. And you probably ever would before. Even if you're a chiropractor, go check it out. Um, we also support subluxation-based chiropractic. Um, it's a big word. It means a lot. And uh, it's uh, it's deep rooted in the 127 years philosophy of chiropractic and why chiropractors do what they do. And then lastly, um, we also believe in innate intelligence and universal intelligence. We believe that when man or woman, the physical is adjusted by a chiropractor, it connects them to man or woman, the spiritual. And with that being said, Dr. Melinda, welcome to Cairo Hustle. Thank you so much for having me today. Yeah, um, I, I feel like this show is going to be really helpful for people that are interested in, um, I know you're a second generation chiropractor, um, but that type of like legacy and like the handoff of knowledge, the handoff of business principles, the handoff of, you know, taking the torch and walking with it. So let's just start with your story and uh, re uh, introduce yourself to your friends, your family, your colleagues, and all the TLC community, because I'm sure they're all going to listen to this one. (laughs) Yes. So I am a second generation chiropractor. I practice with my father and my uncle. And so that means I've been adjusted since birth. Uh, I was actually adjusted in womb by uh, Dr. Webster. My parents took me. I was a breech baby. They took my mom to see Dr. Webster. No, he did not adjust me. He adjusted my mother. Um, but yes, so I've had a, a very long history of, of chiropractic care. And uh, when I was about 18 years old, I wanted to go to chiropractic school. And my dad told me that I had to do human dissection. And I said, ah, no, thank you. And so I said, okay, well, maybe I'll go study business instead. So undergrad degree in business marketing, minor in psychology, worked in sales for a little while, uh, had two children, got married, had two children, and uh, after children decided, well, children's diapers stink, and uh, if I can handle children's diapers, I can handle human dissection. So uh, went about this the very long way around to become a chiropractor. I was a massage therapist in between there as well, and uh, finally made it to chiropractic school 
and graduated in 2016 from Sherman College of Chiropractic in Spartanburg, South Carolina. What a fun, fun journey you've been on. Um, and I, I always tell people that listen to our show, uh, I, I've probably coined a couple of things, but they're from other people. But chiropractic's from womb to tomb and from cradle to grave. And I think it's really cool. Like I worked in a clinic for six years and some people know this story. I, I think it's a funny story, but um, this is 14 years ago. I, I'm working in an office and I didn't know chiropractors could turn babies. Like you were turned as a baby. Like you came out the right way, I assume, after you did Webster's technique and all of a sudden, whoa, we have a normal, easy pregnancy. Um, but I didn't know that chiropractors should, could do that. So like Dr. Mike, if you're listening to this, Dr. Mike, it's a funny story. It's about you. Um, like a patient comes in and she's prego. And I'm like, what is he doing? Like, I'm just so like new to the, to working in the office. I have no idea what he's doing. And he's like working on her tummy and he's like adjusting her pelvis. And like, before I know it, she's like the baby turned and I'm like the baby turned. So for like the next week, anytime we were somewhere, I kind of thought it was embarrassing to say it to him, but it was kind of like a, like a pat on the back. I'm like, this guy can turn babies. Like I was just so like, like expect miracles. Like, come on now. Like, I didn't know that was a thing. Like, why don't more people know that chiropractors can do Webster's technique? <laughs> well, it's the innate intelligence of the body. We don't turn anything. Uh, we balance the pelvis, and from there, the baby knows what it needs to do. Yeah, wow. Like, that that part of your story, like, it, it stands out to me because I've seen that miracle happen, and I, I know that it's a real thing. And if every mom out there actually knew that chiropractors could, like, help with their pregnancies, they wouldn't be so stubborn limping around. Like, I, I've done so many screenings. I've gone out and met people, and they're like, oh, I'm fine. I'm like, lady... I just know because I've been educated that like, if you go see a chiropractor during your last trimester of being pregnant, you have a 40% quicker delivery time. And that like perks them up. And I'm like, yeah, by the way, if you aren't seeing a chiropractor, like you should be seeing a chiropractor as like your like, you know, health team while you're pregnant. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's important, right? Yeah, they're they're making a human. The the blueprint that they receive comes from your body. And if you're subluxated, then what information is being passed in that blueprint? I mean, that's just it. It's like that's how I believe that chiropractic really helps people is like family health model. It is like especially when a woman's pregnant and she wants to have like a healthy child and like a, a, a you know, healthy pregnancy and healthy delivery. And she yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Like, let's make you the healthiest that we can make you to where you can make the baby inside you the healthiest that you can make it. Make sense? Yeah. It's like very linear. Just like, aha, that's why chiropractic works. And then, of course, they go through their pregnancy and they want you to, like, make sure that the baby's clear from day one. And was that your experience, too, when you were, when you were a baby? Did you get, like, adjusted on day one? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I was, was adjusted from birth. My my children were adjusted from birth. My father actually adjusted them because I wasn't a chiropractor yet. Um, it wasn't until my children were two and four that I decided to go to chiropractic school. So, yeah, they, they get weekly care. Yeah. You know, I I didn't get my first adjustment till I was 16. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. You know, and, and my my whole life, I was like, I could just imagine what would have been like a trajectory of like my life and like my, my background if I had been getting chiropractic care since I was born. What a, what a, what an advantage to like. Well, I never had, uh, you know, the concept of of going to the doctor to take medication. You know, if you had a headache, you got adjusted. If you had a cold, you got adjusted. And I didn't know that this is. The way, not the way the entire world was. I mean, I thought everybody knew that if they had a headache, they should get adjusted or at least get checked to see if they had subluxation. So, you know, I knew these things, but I didn't understand them until I went to chiropractic school. You know, the philosophy wasn't taught until chiropractic school. So, yeah, it's so, important to understand. So I'm curious. Um, Sherman College of Chiropractic is one of our sponsors. 
And I help a lot of people find their way to uh, a quality chiropractic school that teaches science, philosophy, and art. Um, what, what was it like being at Sherman? And uh, give me some of like your memories. Oh, I love the fact that Sherman teaches chiropractic and teaches subluxation-based chiropractic, and that's all they teach. You know, my father went to Palmer, my uncle went to life. I knew that my husband and children were staying home in Sevierville, Tennessee, and I was going to be commuting two and a half hours um, each, well, to wherever I was going, I was going to be commuting. And so Sherman was the closest, which was definitely a plus, but it was totally a godsend to be on campus there. Um, and so to have the philosophy taught from the beginning, from day one, hands-on classes from day one, starting the process of learning, you know, it was an invaluable experience. The people that I met, you know, who were in my class or in my quarter, day one, stayed with me throughout. And so... Yeah, I, I love the school and uh, I'm excited for our new president and for Lyceum coming up. It's our 50th anniversary. So if you've never been down to Sherman, I'm sure this year is going to be a fantastic year to go. So we're excited. Yeah, I've been out to the campus before um, and I, I think that there's been a lot of growth since then. And right. uh Dr. Jack Borla is a dear close friend of mine, so I'm going to go out there for his presidential investiture and uh, be a part of that weekend with uh, everybody, all the Shermies, as they call them. Um, well, and, you there. Yeah, so I think it's going to be a, a, a great time the first weekend, May. So if you guys are anybody listening that is wanting to go to uh, the center of the chiropractic universe, go out to Spartanburg, South Carolina, and uh, go out there and meet Dr. Jack Borla. And hey, you can see Dr. Melinda and myself out there too. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I'm excited for the future of Sherman. Um, I do think that um, they have set themselves apart from a lot of the um, medical modeled colleges. And that's something I really support. Now, I also think that there's room for all of us at the table, but we should probably lean more towards the Sherman model for educating the chiropractic student because they are, as Edison said, the doctors of the future. Well, they're also the doctors of the present. So we need to teach them science, philosophy, and art of chiropractic. And uh, I think that that's something that Sherman does a fantastic job of. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, so now let's transition a little bit. Um, you're like the perfect associate. Your dad's a chiropractor, your uncle's a chiropractor, your family's had this practice for 45 years. Um, what makes the, I think the best question is, what makes the, the associate model work for you guys? I definitely think that when I was graduating chiropractic school, I thought I knew everything <laughs> and wanted to jump in and change everything in the practice. And, um, you know, anytime that you get involved with something, you learn and School is great, and I love Sherman, and the amount that you can prepare for in chiropractic school versus what you need every single day as a doctor of chiropractic, uh, there's just so much that it's, it's not possible for the school to teach you everything. So I think that being an associate and learning from 40, at the time, like 38 years of experience, why would I not take that opportunity to listen and learn? Looking back now, at the time I wanted to change it and fix it, but looking back, how crazy is it not to just gleam all the information uh, and experience that you can possibly learn from someone else who's obviously run a successful practice? So this, this takes me to story time. Like, Uncle, dad, Palmer, wife, maybe share with me a couple stories that you've heard from them or that, you know, that you've been, you know, open to hearing since you've been around them about chiropractic, both from maybe the perspective of graduating and being from like the fountainhead and then graduating and being a part of like the largest chiropractic college out there. 
So I want to tell a story, if it's okay, about um, my dad and coming into practice in the state of Tennessee. Sure. So my dad's license number is in the 100s. So when he graduated from Palmer, doctors of chiropractic had to come into Tennessee and pass the medical boards to be licensed. And if you failed, then you couldn't practice in the state. So this is where we were from. He wanted to come home. Uh, the state association approached him and some other students and said, hey, you know, come in, take the medical board, and then if you fail it, we want to appeal. So he did. He failed. And uh, that appeal process is what really opened up the state of Tennessee for people to come in from a chiropractic license and not have to take the medical board because we're not taught what medical doctors are taught. So I think that's a pretty significant um, story. I'm really proud of my dad. I actually didn't know this until a few years ago. Um, so coming in and, and now, you know, we have 3,000 chiropractors in the state that a lot of it owe it to him and his colleagues at the time who were willing to risk it all possibly fail and never be able to practice in your home state uh, to come back and, and appeal and be licensed here. You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. This episode is sponsored by Transact Card, Align Life, Neuroinfinity, Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Sherman College of Chiropractic, New Patients in a Box, Life Chiropractic College West, Pro Hockey Cairos, Pro Baseball Cairos, and the IFCO. Let's hustle. You know, that just puts like the, the hair on my arm stands up because I think about the cultural significance of it. And, you know, I think about protecting the sacred trust and the things that we actually, you know, my rhetoric almost is like, hey, this is why we do what we do. But when you hear somebody that is out there doing that same thing, um, that that passes down its legacy. It is. I mean, when we talk about legacy, we always say we, we stand on the shoulders of those that have come before us. Well, I every day get to do that in practice, in my father's practice, um, that we are transitioning to be my practice. Um, but just my ability to practice in the state at all is is based on, on him and others or the people who, you know, went to jail for practicing without a license or what. For what they believe. I mean, you know, we kind of started, we might see that a couple of years ago. Um, so, you know, I don't think that it came to that, that I know of, I could be wrong, but yeah, standing up for what you believe in is going to be significant now well, and going forward. Yeah. I think that chiropractic has had a huge uh, adversion um, from judgment. Like chiropractic has had, always had to be a bit different, you know, like, I was at Easter dinner and, and uh, my friend's parents were talking about um, that they didn't always trust chiropractic and they're in their, you know, late sixties. And I was like, yeah, I get it. You know, the um, AMA did a phenomenal job of, you know, eliminating and lying about chiropractic to where the general people thought that it was a bad thing to do. I was like, we still have a lot of, you know, shame and guilt based on the profession by, you know, propaganda. We have a lot of repair to still do to reputation management and, you know, course correct back to chiropractic as help helps people. And they told me that they're like, yeah, you know, um, we love our chiropractor. He gives us care plans and we stick to it. And I was like, oh, awesome. That's great. You know, but for a long time, people didn't think that it would do anything for them. They thought that chiropractors were just trying to like get a couple bucks out of them. And really like today, based on that 45 year 
history with your family and the history of the profession, you know, going to jail, practicing chiropractic without a license, you know, all these things. Um, chiropractors do stand on the shoulders of giants. And that there is a huge legacy that chiropractic has to like remember and they have to, we have to talk about those things. Otherwise the next generation, they're not going to adjust anymore. And they're, they're going to, we're going to be like, that's not chiropractic. And they're, we're, they're going to say, well, that's what they taught us in school. That's scary. Um, the adjustment is what makes us separate and unique and the term subluxation I always like to say, well, if you can't say subluxation, how do you know you don't have it? <laughs> because it's a big word. Um, but we should use that. This is our field, our house. We should use the term subluxation. We should not water down our communication of chiropractic for anyone. And this is how we are going to guard the sacred trust and pass it on to the next generation. So let, let's talk about that a little bit. I love question five that I send everybody is like, I future them out like, hey, where do you see the profession headed? And I think that that's like, almost like dropping a bomb on this episode is like, where do you see chiropractic going right now? I mean, being in a Sherman grad, being apprenticed and associateship with the family, like, that's a pretty cool place to be. But where do you see it everywhere else? Yeah, I definitely understand and recognize that there is a, a divide within the profession of those that want to do more pharmaceuticals and those that don't. And I am definitely on the side that don't because there is a, a time and place for that someplace else, but not in the chiropractic profession. But I will still love my brothers and sisters who choose to do differently than I. Um, but definitely, you know, I would love to see what we were talking about with the associates continue to grow. Um, to the point, you know, that's one thing that the medical community does really well, fellowships, you know, the time that they have to spend under someone else, you know, the amount of adjustments that was required of me as a student is comparable to a month, less than a month in my practice. So how can you possibly be ready to perform at the next level um, without time and experience in a practice? So I would, my goal is to have 20 associates um, in my lifetime, and there's no reason that I can't do that, not for them to grow my practice, but for me to mentor them, to then turn them to be able to go out and start their own practice, or like we said before, to purchase a practice of someone who's already been established in the community. So I would love to see our associates grow but it has to be done right because there are so many stories of people who had a terrible experience in an associateship uh, and, and that's not okay either. So yeah, chiropractic business is one of those things that's always evolving. And I think we are at a place where I say enough camera, like there's a lot of baby boomers that are going to be retiring soon. And there's a lot of practice, like we know the stats. We know that chiropractors have a fail rate of 50% after five years of practice. It's the same as small businesses. Um, but I think that there's a, a, a bigger problem when it comes to like a medical provider and a healthcare professional. Um, I always say it's like having a soldier out on the, on the, the turf and, you know, we lost one of our soldiers. Like, what does it do to that family that believed in that chiropractor? What does it do to the void of that community that chiropractor is supposed to go out and serve in? Like, we need to make sure that everybody's successful. So if we did create some type of a legacy handoff model, like a residency in the medical world, um, I think it would be really healthy for the future of chiropractic. I think it would be really uh, responsible for not only the next generation, but for the pass on of legacy, like what you're getting a chance to experience. And that's something that TLC is working on as a community. Um, so definitely something that um, I think is important. And so if somebody is interested in, you know, having associates in their office, then obviously I would highly encourage them to reach out to TLC. TLC was a godsend in our transition as well, because if you've ever tried to work with your family, there can be a little bit of a hiccup along the way um, and having a community, a coaching group that can be objective, look outside and say, you know, it's gonna be okay, 
keep you accountable to what you are working on. Uh, I think that every chiropractor, you live in the chiropractic bubble when you're a student, and then you get out of the bubble, and that support in the community isn't necessarily there. And so I think everyone should be involved with a community of chiropractors. Mine just happens to be TLC. Yeah. And that's just to, to, you know, um, I'm pretty social and social and I'm always posting engagement stuff and I'm also always trying to like draw out, you know, good resources for chiropractors to have like access to good knowledge and the best of the best. Like, I feel like that that's something we've done really well with being Cairo hustle is we've created a community too. Yeah. And, you know, we get a, the opportunity of networking with great teams like TLC and, and meeting the, the people that are coached by that group. And I do think that we have created a really great ecosystem between the media end of what we do and the management and coaching end of what the TLC team does. So I think, yeah, I mean, the more that we work together and realize that we're stronger together than by ourselves, um, I think we're going to have a, have a lot more fun doing this, this stuff with chiropractic, whether it's practicing chiropractic or creating media for chiropractic. Um, we couldn't survive without what you do either. I'm just so thankful to to be here and uh, to acknowledge what you do for our profession because you know you're filling a void that has not had a platform. And so, thank you. Yeah, I, I, thank you. You know, I, I just I, I just tell people I, I just weave together the tapestry of chiropractic and help create something that has like legacy to it. And we're documenting the profession with these stories. So in 10 years from now, we'll look back and we'll see some people that were, you know, really important in this profession that we chronicled their, their conversation about chiropractic, something that mattered to them more than anything, you know? And I think that that's the, the beautiful thing about this is chiropractors really care about what they do. They care about the profession. They care about the adjustment, the science, the philosophy, the art, like they care about the colleges that they went to. They care about the next generation. Like it's a very much care, give, love, serve profession when it comes to caring. And I, that's something I think that everybody that gets a chance to like see what we do, we they know that chiropractors care about the future. They care about their families and they care about the people that are like knee to knee with them. And I think it's a beautiful thing. That's why I call it the beautiful profession. Um, but let's transition back to a little bit more about you. Um, I know you've practice with your dad, but do you have any other heroes um, that that stand out to you that helped you become who you are today as a chiropractor? Well, I definitely love Irene Gold. Um, everybody who has ever taken an Irene Gold board review probably loves Irene Gold. <laughs> um, and, you know, again, to, to have so many years in, in practice and so many, or, you know, in the, the chiropractic profession involvement, uh, I definitely think that that's definitely a hero. Uh, I love Dr. Dean and Dr. Jen with TLC and what they are doing to not be the center of it and continuing to practice um, and, and pass that on so that way TLC exists without them. I think that's, you know, it's not the Dean and Jen show, it's the TLC community. So I highly applaud them for what they're doing. I'm from Sevier County, so, you know, I love Dolly Parton. <laughs> She's just a neat lady. We got to go off, off chiropractic script for five seconds. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I love Dolly. So she's from Tennessee, yeah? She's from Sevier County, yes. My my hometown has Dollywood in it, <laughs> in Sevier County. And uh, she, but really, it goes back to giving back. And I think that's, you know, what we as chiropractors are called to do is to give back to our communities. So I have to acknowledge her for that. No, I think it's cool. Like you come from Dolly land. I come from Palmer land. <laughs> uh, Davenport, Iowa, you know, like I, I always, when I was a kid growing up there, I was always like, Oh gosh, I'm from Davenport. You know, now I look back on, I talked to so many chiropractors they're like, you're from Davenport, Iowa. Whoa. And I'm like, bro, it's, it's all right. We'll give you a thumbs up to that one. But, you know, like I do think that it does have some significance where, you know, chiropractic's from. 
Oh, and absolutely. I think that chiropractors think it's like Disneyland or something, though. <laughs> well, I have been to Davenport. It is fun to see where my dad went to school and where it all began and uh, tour the Palmer House. And if I could, you know, go back in time, I'd, I'd ask BJ to write down the code to a safe because I'm really curious what's inside. Um, it's not been opened. And so, yeah, but definitely the, the community and and where you're from does make a difference in how you're raised. For sure. So, so let's close out today, but I, I I'm really curious, like I, I love closing out with uh, the miracle story. You've been in practice a handful of years now. Um, I'm sure you've seen something or a couple of things or maybe daily, but what's some, what's some, what's a case that really stands out to you that you've had a chance to see and see some, some huge changes in some people's lives. Oh, I always love the the women who are having difficulty conceiving and uh, then under a few months of chiropractic care, they, they come back in and tell me I'm pregnant. So I, always, I love those because their joy is just palpable. Um, I love the, the baby stories, you know, one where the baby hadn't gone to the bathroom for a day or two and baby gets adjusted and within 15 minutes is filling the diaper, you know, in chiropractic, we can't say what we prevented from happening um, because we don't know what would have happened had someone not been adjusted. Um, but we do know that we change lives. Yeah. It's like BJ's adjustment, like quote that talks about releasing tiny rivulets over the nervous system that animate the organs, tissues and cell of the body to, um, do what it's supposed to do, you know, and I think that that's the coolest thing, especially with like animal chiropractic and like baby chiropractic is neither one of those groups are talking to you. It's all physiology. You get a chance to see the physiology of an animal after they get adjusted. And then you get a chance to see like the behavior of a baby or a toddler when they get adjusted. And, you know, you see a kid that's heads turn like this and they're not moving and they're not latching they get adjusted and get the little atlas moving and it comes back to center and then they're nursing again and then they're not crying all the time and it changes Mommy and the, daddy get to sleep it changes the dynamics of the whole darn family so i think that that's a, it's a beautiful thing and i think that the women are the decision makers for the health care of their family so if we can get more families involved with chiropractic and take care of more women um, chiropractic has a, a long future ahead of it. And I mean, uh, if you can take your kids not being home from school sick and you can take those days and go take a family vacation instead of having to miss work financially because your kid's sick um, or just your, you yourself as a, an adult, you know, what impact does that have on community connection, family, you know, lifelong yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's a legacy thing, and I think that that's how we opened up, and that's how we'll close today. And I just uh, really appreciate you being episode five hundred and ten of the Cairo Hustle podcast. I can't wait for five thousand and ten. <laughs> well, I, I love that. Maybe, maybe that's my twenty year forecast. <laughs> so, okay, if you uh, make it to five thousand and ten. I'm coming back. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Dr. Melinda, thanks for being our guest today. And I just want to close out by telling everyone you're just one story away. Keep hustling. I'll see you guys in the next episode and I'll talk to you soon, Dr. Melinda. Yep. All right. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.